Hey guys, so in this video we are going to be going over farming, fishing, and man in the middle attacks. So farming is a form of redirection where traffic intended for one host is sent to another. Uh, this is going to be accomplished by two ways. Uh, you know, kind of on a smaller scale, you'll see changes on, with entries in the hosts file. And on a larger scale, you'll see changes in entries in a DNS server. Now, this is pretty neat. Um, what will happen is a user is going to try and get to a site, and they're actually going to get redirected to another one that looks pretty close to it. So you got your user, Bob, over here, and uh, he wants to get over to Google. And uh, instead of farming, we got a fake, fake Google. Call it Google too. What will happen is he's going to get redirected. Instead of being sent over here, Bob is going to get sent to Google too. And so all the login information and usernames, passwords, documents, blah, 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 Google too is going to capture that stuff. And, uh, you know, for something like Google, it wouldn't be long before. Uh, you know, actual Google figured out, hey, we're getting some uh, traffic being redirected, and they'd go and shut this down, and then Bob would actually be able to get all the way over to Google, like the real one. But, uh, you know, while, you know, these things can get shut down pretty quickly, or not so much, just depending on how it goes, this still gives, you know, fake websites enough time to gather any information they need to or, you know, as much as they possibly can from, you know, multiple users. Because it's not just going to be Bob. You know, Google 2 is out on the web, so, you know, it's going to try and get as much stuff as it possibly can from multiple people. So, discussing phishing, this is a pretty neat attack where the attacker is going to have some type of email, you know, that looks like it's sent from a legitimate source, and that goes to the user. The user is going to pop it open and they're going to see something around the lines of, uh, hey, your account is broken on a, you know, such and such site and we need you to enter your login information to fix it. You know, so talking about Bob again, we got Bob on his computer. He's going to get an email from uh, the attacker over here. Yeah, uh, get over here. And uh say the attacker is actually impersonating the big money bank. You know, and it's not always gonna be an impersonation of a company. But uh sometimes it will be. You know, it just depends on how the attacker's feeling. And uh, you know, they'll send their email and they'll say, Hey, we need you to enter your information. So it's gonna come with a URL for the user to click on and uh, so say Bob thinks that this email is coming from the big money bank and will say uh, you know bmb.com on the URL and uh, what will actually happen is the URL is going to take him to another site that's going to be the attackers site so it could be looking like something totally different and, uh, you know, a way to check that, you know, if you get an email that looks kind of fishy, all you got to do is just highlight right here. Oh, well, that wasn't a highlighter, but you get the idea. You just highlight whatever the URL was, and then it'll pop up and show you what the real thing is. So that way you know what you're dealing with. You know, the attacker's going to do this kind of attack to grab some access information so that, you know, when it's done with you, you can turn around and just put in the real stuff to get into Bob's account on the big money bank. So that's uh, that's fishing for you. Now with spear phishing, what's going to happen is instead of Bob getting something from uh, the big money bank or you know the, the attacker's big money bank, Bob is actually going to get something from someone more personal. Uh, spear phishing is going to be something like from your boss someone that you know you know it's just a more personal connection now you can obviously see how 
if you're getting something from your boss, right, you know, Mr. Boss up here, you got an email from your boss, you'd be more likely to respond to it than from some, you know, big money bank that you never heard about or, you know, whatever it is, right? So you're going to be more likely to give up whatever information it is that the attacker wants. Uh, you know, you could have some instance where your boss sends you an email, says uh, your direct deposit account is uh, going all haywire, and we need you to click on this link, get you uh, fixed up right away, and we can continue working. Something like that. So it still has the URL in place, and everything's working. For the attacker, anyway. So now with vishing, uh, vishing with a V, What's going to happen is the attacker is going to use voice over IP, basically just give you a nice call. And all it is is really just social engineering, you know. Uh, you have your attacker going around seeing who they can find to give up their information. And uh, with this uh, voice over IP, you know, making use of that, they don't have to worry about being traced, caller ID, you know, whatever it is that uh, could link back to them. And so... You know, that's all they're going to do. They're going to call you, try and get your data. So with a man-in-the-middle attack, what's going to happen is the attacker is going to place a software or some kind of rogue router in between a server and a user. So you got your user over here. And your server over here. And, uh... So, as the name suggests, you got, you know, something, your man, in the middle. And what's going to happen is it's going to intercept pieces of data that are traveling between the server and the user. Now, how this works is it'll grab a piece of data from the user, All right? I'll get to here. And then it's going to pass it on to the server. And the server takes it, and the server's going to send its response back, and the response is going to hit the man in the middle first. The man's going to take it, read it, do whatever, send it over to the user. So that in and of itself, just being kind of like a, a bridge to connect the user and the server, that's not really harmful. The harmful part is what it does at the same time. As, you know, it's kind of acting like spyware in the sense like it's, you know, looking at information, packets of data that are being sent between the user and the server. So it's, you know, viewing what it shouldn't be. It could alter the data. It could, <clears throat> excuse me, it could, you know, just in general compromise the security of the session between the user and the server. So the man in the middle is simultaneously going to act as the server for the user and it's going to act as the user for the server now uh, recently you've seen you'll, you'll see this a lot more or it's been seen a lot more on wireless networks because uh, you know when you're not having to worry about connect, connecting to a wire you can get an attacker say like placed outside of a building they can just grab packets of data you know, alter them, catch them, do what they need to, and just send them on. Uh, an easy way to negate this, though, is using, like, WPA2 encryption. You know, something of that nature. And uh, those were our attacks for this video. Hope it helped.